go. Hello, everybody. Trying to cut corners here and go straight to my Facebook so I can see your comments, but I gotta let our music play, let our people get on here. Yeah, thanks for being here too. How are you today, Lee? Excellent, excellent. Happy Hump Day. <laughs> it is, it's Wednesday. Oh my gosh, yes. it's already February 3rd. We survived Groundhog Day, can you believe it? It is, it seems to keep repeating itself. Yesterday was crazy too. Oh my goodness. How was your Groundhog Day? <laughs> Ours was memorable, for sure. Okay, now you did see a shadow, correct? Yes, we're going to have six more weeks of, of uh, winter, which the East Coast Gus got clobbered <laughs> with a little bit of winter, like 30 inches of snow. Oh my goodness, crazy. A winter Wonderland. That's right. Well, there's 30 in, uh, inches of snow outside. I think you just batten down the hatches and get cozy in front of the fire. <laughs> hey, what else are you going to do? I know. Snowmobiling. Yeah, well, that'd be fun. I guess that's in your car. <laughs> in your car or in your snowmobile? Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, today we are coming to you, by the way, I'm Lisa. I'm Gary. And we are coming to you with some real estate information today. We are going to be talking about appraisals because it is always a topic of conversation whether you are buying or selling a property or refinancing a property we're going to talk about to, to, uh, to today, the five insider secrets for bringing in a top dollar appraisal. Is that the insider secret? The insider secret. Just okay. between you and me. Yeah, terrific. <laughs> well, we know a lot of people are refinancing their homes right now, getting a lot lower interest rate than what they've ever had in the past. And then there's a lot of people buying homes today. That's right. Of course, the inventory is very, very tight. And uh, if we had more inventory, we'd be selling more homes. Yes, we would. <laughs> with these record low uh, interest rates. We're going to start with what is an appraisal because we're going to answer the basic questions here because if you don't know, you don't know. So we'll tell you an appraisal is an independent third party's value of a property. And it's usually based on the recent um, sold homes around it and based on the condition, location, and all the things about your property. Yeah, it's not their opinion, it's based on facts. So most of the facts are recently closed comparable properties to yours. And those are closed, let's say, within the last 90 days. Yeah, that's usually the sooner, the, the more recent uh, closed comparables, the better. We're having a little bit of challenges here in our market because our prices are rising so fast uh, due to the demand, basic economics 101, supply and demand that the appraisals, uh, you're having a hard time finding comps because there hasn't been a lot of sales and the prices are climbing so high that uh, to try and have the appraisals keep up with the market demand. Yes, there's a certain amount of law and accepted practice from appraisers that they just really can't get outside of their box. They're definitely stuck in a box. So. They can be creative, but not real creative, because there's appraisal reviews, there's a lot of things that can go into an appraisal after the appraisal has already been complete. Yeah, we were just having a conversation today about a situation where um, if you're in contract price and a property at 600000 say, and the appraisal comes in some amount less than that, um, but the buyer makes up the difference and it ends up closing at six hundred. Then that makes the new comp in that neighborhood six hundred. So it just stair steps it up once you have a closed comp at that price. Yes, it does. So it doesn't really matter where the appraisal comes in if the buyer is prepared and willing to go forward. Once it closes, that is the comp or that is the comparable price in that neighborhood wherever it closes, not where it appraised. That's right. So one of our first tips on uh, was it about how to make a uh, first tip for when the appraiser is coming to your house, whether you're doing a refi appraisal or a purchase appraisal, number one thing, clean. Make sure it is clean. You want your house to be show ready and looking its very best. Yeah, it's about the same thing as an open house. So look at the appraiser as somebody that's coming in to view your house for the very first time. The cleaner it is, the more organized it is, the higher the appraisal price. Now they're not supposed to be looking at, hey, are the beds made and are the dishes out of the sink? But believe me, it all, everything affects everything else. So if it's clean and ready to go, it's gonna show much better to an appraiser than it would if it were dirty and the pets are running around and your pet squirrel is hanging off the chandelier. <laughs> well, I like 
like to say it's always like dating, like your first date. You want to prepare your house like it's going on its first date. Dressed up and shined up and on its best behavior. <laughs> Dressed up and ready to go <laughs> to the right. next fire. That's right. Um, now the difference, while we're on that, the difference between a refire appraisal and a purchase appraisal, one of the main differences is when you're doing a purchase appraisal, when, the, when you're in contract, there's a target price. When you have a contract between a buyer and a seller, you have a price that the buyer and the seller have agreed to. So the appraiser knows what the target price, what they're aiming for. And so 95, I'd say, percent of the time, do you think they come in at that contract price? And then 5% of the time or so, they come in above or below that price. Um, that's when it's always exciting, especially if it comes in low. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So It, it does happen. I would say the least of those is when it comes in above the contract price. When the appraisal, let's say, it's a $600,000 contract price, and the appraisal comes in at 605 or 610 Everybody on the buyer's side is high-fiving and jumping for joy. Right. That's why it doesn't happen that much. No. But it's always fun when it does. <laughs> Very rare. For the buyer. Very For rare. the buyer. Yeah, Lisa and I call that a rapid rate of return. Yes. You immediately have your equity uh, in the property. So that's the difference. So when you're doing a re refinance, uh, you don't, the, the appraiser doesn't have a contract price, a, a target price they're shooting for. Um, they are going to do the appraisal based on their normal way they do it based on the recent comparables, but that's the main difference. Yes, a refi appraisal, the homeowner always feels good when it comes in higher than what they were expecting. Yeah, that, well, that's always good. Yes, always good. That, that's never a bad day. So when the appraiser comes to your house, of course, if you're in a contract and we are your listing agents, uh, we will be there to meet the appraiser always. We always go and meet the appraisers. It's very important. We want to make sure that they see all the features and benefits of your home and make sure they get counted in the appraisal. I think that's a huge difference. Somebody that knows the market. There's nobody that knows the market more than Lisa and I. Yeah. We meet your appraiser there. I mean, and the appraisers know the market too. Come on, they're, they're appraising properties all day, every day. So when you're talking about, hey, this house over there or this house over there, and we know the house, it's much further along to have a discussion about it because a lot of times they don't appraise every property. But if they're using someone else's appraisal, let's say a closed comp, not the physical appraisal itself, then they're going to ask questions. Hey, did you see that house? What condition was that house in? And if you know the property, like we do, it's always beneficial for the seller that we represent know the properties and help the appraiser understand why that property came in at the price it came in at. Right. Now if you're going to meet the appraiser yourself, if you're, do, if you're doing a refinance, you'll probably be there meeting your appraiser. You want to make sure, number two, our second tip, make sure you have a list typed up of all the upgrades you've done on your house and not just the cosmetic ones. Make sure you have, if you've done a new roof, new plumbing, new electrical, new windows, things that you might not you know, have done that recently, make sure you have a list of those things because it will affect the appraised price of your property. That's right, an appraiser can't see your new electrical panel. He's right. not gonna be out there opening that and looking at that. They can't see the new plumbing or the new sewer lateral you put in. That has to be told to them. Right. Yes, yeah, so don't make stuff up. They yeah. will find out. <laughs> well, no, of course not. Uh, but we always ask our sellers to, to at the beginning of a listing to make us a list of all the upgrades that have been done to the home so we can do our very best to convey those to the buyer. Absolutely. It's a collaborative effect or a collaborative work in progress that we work closely with the seller, seller works closely with us, and then on a sell, the homeowner's never there when the appraiser's there. They just The appraiser feels very uncomfortable with the homeowner there on a purchase. Um, the uh, the third tip we have is to let the appraiser know if you had multiple offers on your property. Now, if it's a purchase, we're going to be, be there talk, uh, talking to the appraiser. Uh, so we would make sure they know that. And if they were over the asking price, just what the demand was for the property, it always, we always want to make sure that they know, they know that. And the second thing I always do when I meet an appraiser, and this is not something that everyone does, but I always do, is check with the title company and see if there's been any closed comparables near that property um, that maybe weren't in the MLS. 
So it doesn't happen very often, but sometimes there's a bellwether property that you need to make sure the appraiser knows about. Yeah, it's very important. So an off-market property is ultimately going to end up on public record. So once it closes and the new owner's name goes on there, then the sale becomes public record. Very important we know that. Appraisers don't always research that information. Sometimes they don't have to. I mean, if there's a lot of closed comparables, closed comps in their area, they might not be looking for that one highest close. They're looking there saying, hey, I've, I've got six or seven right here. That's plenty. And properties that sell uh, off market don't necessarily sell for the highest price either. But I just want to know, one way or the other, high or low, uh, what the appraiser might find. I, surprises are always bad, so I try and do all the research we can to make sure that, that we know everything about that property. Yeah, very important mm -hmm. that uh, you know the market. And number four, always request a local appraiser. Uh, that's really important. Uh, we've had better luck lately with the local appraisers, but during the crazy times, you know, 10 years ago or so, we'd have appraisers coming from Long Beach and from, you know, Bakersfield and you know, two hours away, which is crazy. And, you know, Ventura, like every town, and Camarillo and Oxnard and Ojai, the, the value is going to change, sometimes even just street to street. So it's really important that the person doing your appraisal is local. Yes, because if you're one street over and the neighbors really don't take care of the property, the whole property values on that street are going to be less than people that do take care of their property pride of ownership. That's right. And number five. This is our, the last one. Our last one. Um, like we just said, very important that we show up and meet the appraiser. Like I said, we always do meet the appraisers in person. Uh, some appraisers uh, do have access to properties. We still meet them. Um, it's just really important that we meet them, that we point out the features and benefits of your home, uh, possibly location, view, uh, extra things you've done to the house. And really important, too, if you have an odd-shaped room or an odd-shaped something, that you stage it as something, that it is viewed as usable space by the appraiser. Yeah, I would say most appraisers, when they call us to set up an appointment, they're fine if we're not there. In fact, some of them even appreciate the fact that, oh, hey, uh, you know, I can go. I don't need you there. But we always show up 100% of the time. Right. So those are our five top tips on appraisals. If you have any questions about appraisals or anything else about real estate, we love to talk about real estate. So give us a call. DM us if you have a question you want us to cover here on the show, and we'd be happy to. And always remember to watch us live. We love seeing you here. So thanks for watching, and you can always visit us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. Insider secrets. <laughs>